In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. We implore your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever closer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly towards the worthy celebration of the Paschal Mystery. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, this is what I commanded my people. Listen to my voice, then I will be your God and you shall be my people. Walk in all the ways that I command you so that you may prosper. But they obeyed not, nor did they pay heed. They walked in the hardness of their evil hearts and turned their backs, not their faces, to me. From the day that your fathers left the land of Egypt, even to this day, I have sent you untiringly all my servants, the prophets. Yet they have not obeyed me nor paid heed. They have stiffened their necks and done worse than their fathers. When you speak all these words to them, they will not listen to you either. When you call to them, they will not answer, will not answer you. Say to them, this is the nation that does not listen to the voice of the Lord, its God, or take correction. Faithfulness has disappeared. The word itself is banished from their speech. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, Harden not your hearts, as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute, 
And when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the crowds were amazed. Some of them said, By the power of Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. The Gospel of the Lord. I want to focus especially on the, the last part of this gospel where Jesus speaks here about being the stronger man that he attacks, the, the stronger man that overtacks and overcomes the other strong man, takes away the armor on which he relied is, and distributes the spoils. So the way we're given here an image of Jesus as a conqueror, as this strong man coming to take over and really to reign within and sometimes we're not always comfortable with this image of Jesus, the warrior, the one who is coming in to conquer. And that's because, of course, it carries with it the, those negative things of warriors that come to destroy and to dominate. And it's important for us to know that that's not what Jesus, we all know that that's not what Jesus does. It's not how, how he's coming to us. But I do think that, it's impo that it is helpful for us to see Jesus as a conqueror, not because of what Jesus is coming, not because of Jesus' violence, but because of the reality of ourselves. Sometimes we forget that, that within us at times we have those barriers that we have put up, and sometimes we're not even aware of them, or, or that maybe they're there, but we just forget about them. Those, those boundaries that we have put up, in a way we become like uh, a firm tower against the Lord because of our defenses. It may not, it's not, may not be because of our sin, but just because of, of our fears. Perhaps we, we, we don't believe that Jesus is as good as he says he is, so we need to protect ourselves. Or maybe there are those areas in our life that are just filled with shame, that we were afraid that if Jesus sees that, that, that he, he'll run the other way. So there's a, a barrier holding it. You know, or there, there are all those parts of our life that where we become this barricade against the Lord. And so the good news for us in, in when, we, when we have that, sometimes we are, in a way, defenseless against ourselves because we, they're, they're automatically there. But the good news for us is that Jesus sees that and he is coming after us. He is the conqueror. He is the one who desires us. Of course, but he doesn't do it with, you know, axes or cannonballs. He doesn't come to destroy us or hurt us. The way that Jesus comes as conqueror very much more frequently as one who comes to woo one who comes to soften us, speak words of comfort so that we would be willing to open up, so that we would be willing to hand over our armor more, more willingly. And so the, 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 the treasure of seeing Jesus as coming to us um, is, is that, we, that we would be more able to open up to him. 
Sometimes if we see him as conqueror in that way, as one who comes to woo, who comes to soften us, we might think, well, he's coming very weakly. But of course, Jesus' strength is really manifested in his weakness or his, in, in the way that he comes so gently. But we're meant to see clearly that in, in that gentleness and the way that he comes to us, he, that doesn't take away in any way from his intention to conquer us all the way through. He wants to be all in us and to, and to have only his throne reigning in, him, in, in us. That's his throne of mercy. It's his desire to be firmly rooted there. Sometimes it's think, we think that it's it's only for us to allow Jesus and that we are in control, but it's actually the Lord who is coming to woo us over totally, and He desires to be only in control. And our whole lives really are, are giving in to that, listening again. You love me. You've placed your mercy here again, or in all of those wonder, wonderful ways that He comes in to conquer us. It's all the way. And I, just, just a, a final word about this, this, um, this line, just to kind of help to see where this gospel is revealing it. The stronger one who attacks, which of course is attacking with his wooing, with his softening of our hearts, he takes the armor on which he relied, so therefore making us softer, more receptive to him, and then distributes the spoils. Those spoils are, are those things that we have held on to, uh, mostly out of fear, but we think they are so important to us, those areas of shame, those areas that, that keep us really from receiving the Lord more deeply. And when he distributes them, they really become changed. Now we see what we had held on to as something that we, we, we were protecting it in, in a fearful way, but now we can release it because they have been touched by his mercy. And now we see those weaknesses, those areas that were shame, are now areas of greater freedom because he has chosen to dwell there. They do not hold us back. We're not, we're not held behind in, in stone walls anymore, but now we are free, letting go of those spoils so that, so that others can see what Christ has done in us. It's kind of an image of what, what happens when we allow the Lord more deeply and more deeply to reign in our hearts. Let's stand together and offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. For our bishops, may the gifts of the Holy Spirit help them in every way as they shepherd their flocks. We pray to the Lord. For community leaders, may God give them a spirit of humility and generosity and leadership. We pray to the Lord. Kindle in us a spirit of joy for the gift of our faith. We pray to the Lord. For a swift and miraculous end to the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. And for all of those who have died, especially for Rita Miller, for whom this Mass is being offered. May they soon rest in the peace of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. O God, source of all that is good, listen to our prayers and grant them according to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Cleanse your people, Lord, we pray, from every taint of wickedness, that their gifts may be pleasing to you, and do not let them cling to false joys. For you promised them the rewards of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we may love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this place of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop and all the, his, the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. With the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
prayer, a spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, 
those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your salvation, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. We call on your loving kindness and trust in your mercy, O Lord. And since we have from you all that we are, through your grace we may seek what is right and have strength to do the good we desire through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace.